So we're getting to the point that the Course refers to in many different ways. One quote would be, All things work together for good. There is no exception except in the ego's judgment. And the general ideas that, that relate that the script is written and that everything is in perfect divine order if it is seen, perceived correctly. And that choice in right perception is a choice that is available right now and only right now. That the belief that salvation is in the future is still projecting it way, still, still a fear of accepting the correction this instant and projecting it to time. Down just a little further we read, Be not content with future happiness. It has no meaning and is not your just reward. For you have cause for freedom now. What profits freedom in a prisoner's form? Why should deliverance be disguised as death? Delay is senseless, and the, quote, reasoning that would maintain effects of present cause must be delayed until a future time is merely a denial of the fact that consequence and cause must come as one. Look not to time, but to the little space between you still to be delivered from and do not let it be disguised as time, and so preserved, because its form is changed, and what is, what it is cannot be recognized. The Holy Spirit's purpose now is yours. Should not his happiness be yours as well? And this last couple sentences refer to the, the projection so that the mind continually is offered by the ego to com keep changing the forms and look for salvation and happiness in some form, some idol. Whereas the Course and its the Holy Spirit and the new purpose given emphasizes that form is meaningless and that it's only by holding that purpose, that one intention that the Holy Spirit offers that happiness and peace and salvation are ever accepted. And that the acceptance of this purpose can only take place right now. To close out this side of this tape on our topic of time, if we jump ahead into the workbook and to Lesson 7, that we referred to previously. I see only the past on page 11. We can jump down to the beginning of the paragraph. Old ideas about time are very difficult to change because everything you believe is rooted in time and depends on your not learning these new ideas about it. Yet that is precisely why you need new ideas about time. So we're getting an indication that the self-concept is based on a time-space belief. And the, the belief in time, as we've just read from the text, is the belief, is an ego concept that, in a sense, is a defense against the holy instant or the recognition that salvation is now. And if we jump to the next lesson, lesson number eight, we can see that the reason the deceived mind sees only the past is because of its preoccupation with past thoughts, which are thoughts that become projected out into the images as the images on the screen the deceived mind sees, or thinks it sees. My mind is preoccupied with past thoughts. This idea is, of course, the reason why you see only the past. No one really sees anything. He sees only his thoughts projected outward. 
the mind's preoccupation with the past is the cause of the misconception about time from which your seeing suffers. Your mind cannot grasp the present, which is the only time there is. It therefore cannot understand time and cannot, in fact, understand anything. The one wholly true thought one can hold about the past is that it is not here. To think about it at all is therefore to think about illusions. Very few have realized what is actually entailed in picturing the past or in anticipating the future. The mind is actually blank when it does this because it is not really thinking about anything. So we have a clear description of the deception that the mind is preoccupied with past thoughts. These thoughts are projected outward. The images that are seen are also images of the past, therefore. And the mind sees what it seems to be a sequence of events that are happening. And it sees itself as if it is a body within the time-space universe. And that events that it makes sequential are occurring when in fact the whole thing, the whole hallucination is basically an old script that is long ago finished and the thoughts which produce that script are also uh, completely gone. That the holy instant and the real thoughts of the mind are available if the mind can lay aside these projected past thoughts and accept the correction in this instance. Now if we jump ahead to Lesson 181, we again take a look at the past and future time as the ego sees it, defending against the acceptance of the correction right now. And we'll pick it up in the middle of the page. We do not care about our future goals, and what we saw an instant previous has no concern for us within this interval of time, wherein the, we practice changing our intent. We seek for innocence and nothing else. We seek for it with no concern but now. A major hazard to success has been involvement with your past and future goals. You have been quite preoccupied with how extremely different the goals this course is advocating are from those you held before. And you have also been dismayed by the depressing and restricting thought that even if you should succeed, you will inevitably lose your way again. How could this matter? For the past is gone, the future but imagined. These concerns are but defenses against present change of focus in perception. Nothing more. We lay these pointless limitations by a while, a little while. We do not look to past beliefs, and what we will believe will not intrude upon us now. We enter in the time of practicing with one intent, to look upon the sinlessness within. And this is a very clear statement, again, that the Course is offering us a, a metaphysical solution to the perceived problem of the world, offered to us this very instant, if we choose to accept it. And all of the, the thoughts, all of the beliefs, all of the, the things and the process that, that we believe we must go through can be circumvented, can be let go with the acceptance of the correction, the sinlessness within, in this very instant. And this is quite an extraordinary 
path in the sense that um, almost every path that one can find involves the conceptual or the metaphorical element of process, of trying to reach a future goal of enlightenment or a future goal of waking up. And these passages about time and about the power of the present moment offer the opportunity to escape the world of dreaming in an instant. Let's close this tape with the first paragraph or two from Lesson 80 on page 141 in the workbook. Let me recognize my problems have been solved. If you are willing to recognize your problems, you will recognize that you have no problems. Your one central problem has been answered, and you have no other. Therefore, you must be at peace. Salvation thus depends on recognizing this one problem and understanding that it has been solved. One problem, one solution.